This is a first of a series of lectures going through different manipulations of trigonometric functions algebraically. This video will focus using the distributive property and using FOIL as well as factoring. We'll start off with something that hopefully is extremely familiar to you using the distributive property. Again, if I had something like a times the quantity b plus c, all I would do is distribute that a over the b plus c and get ab plus bc. I can also do this using trigonometry. If I have, for instance, cosine of y times tangent y minus secant y, what I can do is use the same distributive property and end up with cosine y tangent y minus cosine y secant y. Well, I'm not going to stop here. This is where I'm going to start using some of those identities we've talked about. And in this case, we'll want to rewrite tangent in terms of sine and cosine, and rewrite secant in terms of cosine. And if we do that, then we see we have cosine y times sine y over cosine y, minus cosine y times 1 over cosine y. Whenever I'm multiplying a non-fraction by a fraction, I like to make everything fractions, otherwise my numerators tend to creep up against my denominators. So I rewrite cosine y as cosine y over 1, so I can make sure that I can see that I can reduce my cosine y from my numerator with the cosine y in my denominator. Remember, when we reduce, what we're really doing is dividing. I'm dividing a cosine y out of my numerator and dividing a cosine y out of my denominator. And it doesn't leave behind a 0, it leaves behind a 1. So when I do my reducing, I end up with sine y over 1 minus 1 over 1 or sine y minus 1. I have a lot of students who, when they reduce that cosine y over 1 times 1 over cosine y, it reduces and they just make it totally disappear. Well, it doesn't. It leaves behind a 1, not a 0. All right, here's a review of FOIL. If I have two binomials that I multiply together, a plus b times the quantity c plus d, then that's the first a times c plus the outer a times d plus the inner b times c plus the last b times d. And again, I can do this using my cosine, sines, and tangent functions. If I had sine x plus cosine x times sine x minus cosine x, and if I used FOIL, I would get the following. I can see my outer terms and my inner terms, that negative sine x cosine x plus sine x cosine x, those will add together to be 0, so I'm left with sine squared x minus cosine squared x. Now at this point, it's very tempting to say, hey, there was a trig identity involving sine squared x and cosine squared x. And I know that sine squared x plus cosine squared x is equal to 1. So does that mean that sine squared x minus cosine squared x is maybe 1 or negative 1? Well, no. We can't use that here. There's nothing I can do to the equation sine squared x plus cosine squared equals 1 to get it to look like sine squared x minus cosine squared x. For instance, if I took sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals 1 and subtracted cosine squared x from both sides, I'd end up with sine squared x equals 1 minus cosine squared x, which still isn't equal to sine squared x minus cosine squared x. So although it looks like there can be more that we can do with this, we're stuck with leaving our final answer as sine squared x minus cosine squared x. All right, here's a review on factoring. If I had an expression such as 45a to the fourth b squared plus 18ab cubed, if I wanted to pull out my greatest common factor, first I would have to completely factor both of these terms. So if I took my 45, well 45 is equal to 5 times 9, and I can further break that up as 5 times 3 times 3. So 45 completely factored is 3 times 3 times 5. Likewise, 18, which is 2 times 9, is equal to 2 times 3 times 3. So I've completely factored my numbers. And if I completely factor both my numbers and my variables, then I end up with this. And if I'm trying to find the greatest common factor, I need to find the factors that are in both of these terms. There's a factor of 3 in both of these terms. Well, and there's another factor of 3 in both of these terms. I also see an a in both of these terms, 
and I see two b's available in both of these terms. So that means my greatest common factor is 3 times 3 times a times b times b, or 9ab squared. If I pull that factor out of both of my terms, then I'm left with this, 9ab squared times the quantity 5a cubed plus 2b. Again, hopefully all of this is review for you. Now let's look at this in terms of trigonometric functions. If I say sine squared x cosine squared x plus cosine to the fourth x, I can find a common factor of cosine squared x, and if I pull that out of my two terms, I'm left behind with sine squared x plus cosine squared x. Well, this time we can use that Pythagorean identity. Here's a reminder sine squared x plus cosine squared x is equal to 1. Again, this is something I'm expecting you to memorize. If we go back to our problem, then we can replace sine squared x plus cosine squared x with the number 1, because that's what that's equal to, and I end up with that whole mess that sine squared x cosine squared x plus cosine to the fourth x just equaling cosine squared x. Here's another example using factoring. Now, I know what you're going to be tempted to do. Look, look at how that sine x and that sine x match. We can just get rid of those, can't we? No, you can't. And I don't often yell in big red letters, but this is a mistake we see over and over and over again. And I understand why it's tempting. Look, they match. But let me do this in terms of numbers to explain why we're not allowed to do this. If I have the fraction 2 plus 4 over 2 plus 8, and if I went ahead and got rid of those 2's because they matched, we'll just say we can reduce those out, then I end up with a fraction of 4 over 8, or 1 half, or 0 0.5. But if we take those actual numbers and instead really add them together, then I get 6 over 10, or 6 tenths. The reason why we can't do this is when we reduce, we're dividing. Division only undoes multiplication. As soon as a plus or a minus symbol appears in there, everything's for naught. We can only divide factors out, and these are not factors. You can only reduce factors, not terms. So what can we do? Well, we can factor the numerator and the denominator. If we do that, if we pull out a sine x out of my two terms in my denominator and my two terms in my numerator, then I end up with this. Now we can reduce out that sine x from the numerator and the denominator, because what we're doing is we're dividing. If we've got a factor, if we have a multiplication, then we can do this division. And then I'm left with 1 minus cosine x over 1 minus tangent x. Although I've talked about rewriting tangents in terms of sines and cosines, for this problem, we're really not going to be able to get it any more simplified than what we have here. And there we have the first part of manipulating our trigonometric functions algebraically. We've used a distributive property and FOIL and talked about factoring.